Hey guys, this is the updated Surface 604 Shred. I've been covering this bike for years and I really like it. To me, it's sort of like an SUV. It's fairly trail capable, but the geometry is a little bit more upright. You'll notice this 45 degree stem, a little bit of a low rise handlebar. It can be rotated forward or back just to give you that comfort. The bike actually comes in two frame sizes, which is impressive for a value price bike. This is $25.99 USD, free shipping in the contiguous US and Canada. This is a Canadian company. So Surface 604, that 604 is part of the, the phone code here. If you're in British Columbia, you probably recognize that. And to them, it was talking about like mountains and trails, the coast, the ocean is nearby, and of course their city. So their bikes cater to all of those environments. This one's actually, it's kind of like specced out. There's some optional upgrades that I'll talk about in a minute. The bike comes with a 500 watt nominally rated planetary geared hub motor from Bafang. And I've been very impressed with this thing. It's very smooth and quiet. Sometimes hub motors, they make this like loud zinging noise. This one just feels really fluid. And this is a torque sensing bike. So it doesn't use cadence sensors. The torque sensor tends to be a lot more natural. And I find that it incentivizes me to like pedal and I just feel more dynamic, which is great if you're actually riding on trails. Another thing that's important, especially for a bike with a trigger throttle is motor inhibiting brake lever. So anytime you pull the brakes, that motor is gonna cut out. And again, it's not gonna jump back in until it really feels you pushing. So I, I kind of like that. And, and that's what I mean by trail capable. Let's get into some of the other specs. So this thing comes with boost hub spacing up front, a little bit wider. It's gonna give you a sturdier spoke bracing angle, thicker spokes, 13 and 12 versus 14 gauge. So that's gonna give you just some more strength. And especially with a hub motor, that's a nice thing. 15 millimeter through axle up front. And I love that all of the hardware is black, black hub, spokes, rims. These CST patrol tires are very nice. These are 20 7.5 by 2.8 so they're plus size tires plus is like 2.6 2.8 3.0 so this is solidly in plus size territory you can really see that when you look at the tire it's wider which is going to give you a little bit more float some traction nice deep knobs on this one and of course comfort and for a hardtail that's nice because again you don't really have suspension in the rear but you do have a nice suspension fork this is not the stock fork. Okay, so the bike would come with an SR Suntour fork. It's a steel like spring fork, a little bit more basic. It does have a lockout and it has preload adjust. But if you want for $799, they'll sell you this air Ren fork that's inverted. So you can see the stanchions, that sliding portion, that's down here instead of up here. So I think that's a pretty neat upgrade if you're someone who really wants to dial it in. You can set the air pressure over here. To me, that's sort of like preloading it. And then there's actually a secondary chamber there so you can have it like progressively stiffer. Um, pretty fancy stuff. Over here we have lockout, just like the stock fork. And then here we have rebound. So that's like how quickly it rebounds once you take a hit. Both forks are rated at 110 millimeter travel. So this is pretty much like a cross country setup. And there's a lot of utility here too. So let's come to the back of the bike. You've got these extra bolts here and that's for adding a rear rack. So you could do a child seat, you could have panniers, like a trunk bag. Really nice to see that. And they've actually pre-wired the frame. So you could get their commuter bundle, which has a rack and an integrated light. And that light would run off the main rechargeable battery. Very cool. One of the things I love about the bike is that it does include a headlight. I love how that's set up. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more later. Let's get into the drivetrain though. Standard 170 millimeter length crank arms, but the spindle is not standard. This is like a hollow spindle. So it's, it's lighter, it's very stiff. This is an upgraded part. We've got Welgo platform pedals, kind of like the BMX style with the nice fixed pins, good surface area, good stiffness. I like these a lot. The chain ring is a nice upgrade. This is actually narrow wide, so it's gonna grab that chain. You're not gonna have drops quite as easily. It's just gonna feel uh, a little bit better when you're pedaling, and I think it's gonna be more reliable. As we follow it towards the back, there is no slap guard. That's one of the trade-offs for me. It's like, ah, it's such a nice frame. It's all blacked out. And this is a satin black with glossy branding. So it actually says Surface 604 right there, but it just, it fades away. It doesn't look cheap. It's, it's a nice bike in that sense. It's, it's really good looking. 
we get to the back of the bike. This is a nine speed, 11 to 36 tooth cassette with Shimano Alivio. A little bit lighter, probably a little bit more reliable. We've got a barrel adjuster here. So over time you can kind of dial it in if you start to hear the ticking because the wire does set in in the housing. So I like that. I like that we've got quick disconnects here for like the torque sensor as well as the motor power cable. You know, one of the things that, another trade-off, these tires, they, they aren't reflective. They're not really city tires, but they also don't have like an extra puncture protection rating. So it's it's one of the things, if you do end up getting a flat, at least there's quick disconnects back here, but you're gonna need some tools. I think these are like 18 millimeter nuts, 138 millimeter hub spacing back here, which is kind of unique. I'm used to seeing 135 or 142. And then we've got 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. These are really nice. Tektro, they said that they're using resin pads versus the metallic ones that can kind of squeak a little bit more. I like that. 180s front and rear. You want that larger rotor to give you better cooling properties, a better mechanical advantage. And if we come up towards the top here, you can see that all the wires, there are quite a few, but they're, they're fairly internally routed here. They do protrude a little bit there at the bottom bracket, but they're fairly protected by the chain ring. And I don't know, I, I feel like th this uh, caliper, sometimes it's mounted up high here. I feel like this is tucked away pretty nicely if you do have the rear rack. And even though there are a lot of wires up front, they've left them purposefully a little bit longer just so there's, you know, you can steer this thing and you can adjust the parts. And back to those different frame sizes. So you've got the small medium, the medium large, and then the Shred XS. So it's the same frame as the small medium, but they're using 26 inch wheels instead of 27.5. And that'd be great for someone who's maybe a young, a younger person or just a petite rider. It's still gonna be high step, but the way they've set this up with the battery and stuff, that top tube actually comes pretty low. You'll notice that they've seated that battery as low as possible. And I think they purposely went with the shorter Ranch and Dorado battery. So just walk over to the side of the battery pack. This is the optional upgraded battery. We'll just unlock it. And as I'm taking it off, notice how it kind of spills out to the side a little bit. They're using the larger cells to get that higher capacity, 20 amp hours instead of 14. So we we'll just twist this, kind of pull up and to the left. There we go. 10 pounds on this baby, whoa. <laughs> um, the stock battery, 14 amp hours. That one weighs about 7.7 .7 pounds. So this is what it looks like. Love that we've got a USB charging port on the side. I did test this with my iPhone and it actually worked. So you can imagine going camping and just using this as like spare battery. And a lot of times I'll take the battery off the bike when I'm lifting it, mounting it on my car rack. And I'll tend to store the battery in a cool dry location. And I'll try to keep it at least half full so I'm not stressing those cells out by completely emptying it. Extreme heat is hard on lithium ion cells and extreme cold is just gonna stunt your range temporarily. This is their optional upgraded charger, another $150 upgrade, a little bit heavier. It's like two and a half pounds, but it's a four amp charger, which is really nice to have if you go with the high capacity battery. If this was stock, it'd be a lighter, like pound and a half, two amp charger that takes a little bit longer and they are interchangeable. That's one of the things I like about Reention. Just line that up, clicks into place, very nice. You can see the charging port there on the battery. Pretty good placement. Both of these are high enough and they're not gonna interfere with your pedals if these cycle backwards. I love that the kickstand stays out of the way. You're not getting pedal lock, it's adjustable. But one thing you might notice is the optional high capacity battery pack does bulge out to the left a bit. It's not as symmetrical as the stock 14 amp hour. We're in an area now that's a little bit darker and I think it's gonna make the display easy to see. But coming back to the cockpit, the nice Velo locking grips, they're not gonna twist on you. Adjustable reach brake levers with the motor inhibitors, the reachable button pad, and the trigger throttle. So it's it's a pretty good setup. I like trigger throttles for a bike that could be used off-road because I've experienced this before where I'm on a trail and I'm getting a little bit like nervous. It's getting kind of technical. And then I, I instinctively like grip a little bit harder. And when it's a twist throttle, you can accidentally twist it when you actually want to stop. So trigger throttles, I think it's a, it's a lot easier just to kind of like, you know, it, it just seems safer to me. So over here, we got a little flick bell, kind of basic, but it's fun to have, why not? And then the trigger shifters I mentioned before, they have that optical view window, which is handy. The high lever, which is, it's this one right here, that goes to the high gears. It's not two-way. If this had been Dior, it would go two-way. And I prefer that because I like to use my thumb to do all the shifting and these fingers up here, pointer and middle to do my braking. So to me, that's a little bit of a gripe. Let's go ahead and boot this thing up. And as we do that, 
I want to point out that at the base of the display panel, there's another USB charging port. I think that is so cool. So let's turn it on. Press the power button. Comes to life pretty quickly. It's color, which is nice. And I think it's like three and a half inches. It's a fairly large display panel. And you can see it swivels to help reduce some of that glare. Battery percentage at the top. So it's more precise. I really appreciate that. We've got like a speedometer thing here that shows how fast you're going, how much power you're using. And with a torque sensor, it's really nice because it, it sort of motivates you to pedal a little bit more. It tends to extend your range. Down here, we've got trip distance, odometer, and assist level. We can take this down to assist level zero and nothing is gonna work. There's no pedal assist, the throttle is turned off, but we can turn on that light. So I'll, I'll hold that for a couple seconds. Look at this thing. This is the Bouchel Shiny 120. I think it's 120 lux. Very, very, very bright. And it's got the side windows. So this is another kind of an SUV feature. Most mountain bikes and stuff, they don't usually have kickstands. They don't have racks. They don't have lights and stuff. But it's a really handy thing if this is your only bike or if you're going through the forest. It gets a little bit dark. I, I like this light a lot and it's mounted perfectly. It's up high. It points where you steer like this. It's not on the, the arch of the suspension. It's not going to bounce around. This is just perfect. So great job. So back to the display panel here. If we press this I button, we're going to cycle through some of the readouts. So down here, it changes to max speed, average speed, trip time, and then odometer. So it just kind of cycles around and around. Then we've got the plus and minus. So we can go from zero up to one, two, three, four, or five levels of assist. Of course, you're going to get more power, more support, but you're going to go through that battery a little bit faster doing that. And I just like that the buttons are dedicated. I mean, it's it's easier to know what you're doing. You don't have to memorize anything except maybe walk mode. If we hold the minus key for a few seconds, there we go. It kicks on, which again, 57 pound bike, kind of nice if you get a flat tire or something. The last thing I want to show you with the display is the settings menu. If we hold plus and minus for a couple seconds here, very nice settings display. We can go in here and press the I button and change the units. I'm in Imperial right now, your LCD luminance. So if this is too bright for you, you can turn it down. I love that because I do ride in the early mornings and evenings dormancy. So how quickly it shuts off, state of charge, percentage, trip reset, whole bunch of stuff in here. There's a password. And then this second menu, the advanced settings, this is where you can actually change the wheel size for if you have that uh, shred, you know, XS, the extra small one and speed limit, though so this is really cool. You can raise the speed limit if you're riding on private property or you just want that class three performance for like riding on, on roads to commute to work or something. I think it's nice that they leave this. It's just more open source. This could be a class one, could be a class two if you leave the throttle or kind of class three with that higher speed limit. As I approach the bike, I, I wanted to remember to tell you that they are using a shim to go from 30.4 to 27.2 for that suspension post. I assume that they provide that too. Just worth noting. Uh, and down here, kickstand, stow that, pop on. I'm in the highest level of assist. And I wanna demonstrate that if you don't push very hard, the bike doesn't get crazy. That's the, the torque sensor. Real gentle, right? Like I'm, I'm kind of on a tight trail here. I don't want to go crazy. I don't really have to worry about the assist level. And once I'm ready for power, I just press a little harder and the bike really takes off. There are a couple of trade-offs with this torque sensor. And one is that tightening that rear axle I tend to just be extra careful. I don't want to over tighten it and mess up the torque sensor. I also tend to not be pedaling when I turn the bike on so that the sensor can calibrate properly. And also if I'm on very rough terrain and the chain is bouncing up and down a lot, a couple times I've noticed that the torque sensor will activate when I wasn't pedaling. And in those cases, again, it's nice that the brake levers both have motor inhibitors so you can, you know, kind of keep that under control. gonna cruise through the woods here. Pretty steep climb right now. And I'm getting a lot of support from that motor. The headlight's working well. Kind of aim it down a little bit here. Love that you can just reach out and adjust that. Just a blast. 
very quiet bike between the motor and not really having any fenders or rack on it right now. It's just nice. Even though I call this thing like an SUV, still doing pretty well on this trail here. I'm pushing it. Yeah. Torque sensing pedal assist is definitely noticeable, much more dynamic. So I'm able to take off faster. There's no delay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, that was a lot of fun. It's been a really peaceful afternoon. Just get outside, take a ride. This is the perfect environment for a bike like this. It's just, it's serene, it's tranquil, people are friendly, and the bike is really comfortable, especially with that optional suspension seat post. We got the Ren fork. This thing is tricked out, and yes, that costs more money. Even stock, I feel like this is a, a nice bike just because of the plus size tires and the way they've set up the drivetrain and stuff. Um, I welcome your feedback like in the comments and in the forums if there are accessories you like or if you've had good or bad experiences with Surface 604. I love that they're carried through dealers as well as direct online that they offer the free shipping. Back at the site, electricbikereview.com, I have a comparison tool and the idea is you could see like last year versus this year, maybe something that's comparably priced and just you know try to find the best bike for your budget and your, your lifestyle. I love you guys, ride safe out there. I hope I see you and we'll catch you next time.